I use this little known writing app for my content business. I've tried all of the writing apps out there, Google Docs, Microsoft Word, Ulysses, IA Writer, Scrivener, they all have their strengths, but the Archive is a gem. The Archive costs less than $20 and it basically does note taking and writing. Now, unfortunately it is Mac only, but I'm gonna show you exactly how I use the Archive and hopefully this helps you with your writing and with your note taking process. Before I show you the Archive, it's helpful to understand that with an app like this, your notes do not sit inside of the Archive. It basically opens up markdown and plain text files that you keep on your computer. And this is a big advantage because it means I'm not locked into the archive. In other words, if I write a plain text file or a markdown file with the archive, I can open it up later on with IA Writer, Ulysses or some other markdown app. On the other hand, if I use something like Apple Notes to write and to take notes, it's a bit harder to get them out of Apple Notes and into something else. And I don't, be, I don't like being locked into one tool. So I have on screen an extract from my Zettel Keston. If you're not sure what a Zettel Keston is, I have an entire playlist dedicated to this concept on the channel, so do check that out. But basically this contains thousands of different notes. Some of these are newsletters that I'm gonna write for my daily newsletter. Some are posts that I'm gonna post on social media. Some are uh, interesting ideas that I come across in books and courses. And some are outlines for YouTube videos like this one. And they're all in various states. And I spend 30 to 60 minutes every day working on ideas that I've captured inside of my Zettel Kasten. And of course, I'm using the archive to do it. So let me show you. I like the archive because it's a bare bones, no nonsense, no taking app. In other words, there's not many buttons for me to play with or things for me to customize, but it's still surprisingly powerful. And it's also pretty easy to use. So I have on screen the archive and as you can see, I'm using the up and down key to navigate through those thousands of notes that I showed you in Finder a few moments ago. And this is one of the reasons why I love the archive. So basically I can navigate up and down through my library of notes. And then when I see something I want to jump into, I just simply press tab and I can jump in and I can start to type or write. And if I press control tab, I can go to what's called the Omni search bar. And again, it's all very keyboard friendly and I can of course customize this in the settings in the archive if I want. And here I can type in an idea or a topic that I know I've captured a note about. So for example, I'm gonna type in LinkedIn and now I can see all of the notes that reference LinkedIn. And then I can jump into any one of these and start writing or updating the note that I've taken or the topic that I've written about. And if I press control shift tab, I can go back and start navigating through my library. The other thing I can do is I can use the Omni search bar to write and capture ideas pretty quickly. So I'm just gonna delete LinkedIn and I'm gonna type in my first idea, press enter and it automatically opens a new note. And this means it's very easy for me to open up the archive, navigate through some of my ideas and then start writing something for my newsletter or for social media. I also like the archive because it supports Markdown nicely. Now, if you're not familiar with Markdown, I have an entire video where I do a crash course on the channel, so do check that out. But I'll give you a few little pointers about how I use Markdown inside of the archive. So firstly, Markdown is great if you wanna format stuff for the web. If I put in two asterisks before and after any text, it'll automatically format it, format it as bold. Whereas if I put in one asterisk, it'll turn it into italics. If I put it in the greater than symbol, it'll turn it into a block quote. And I can use a series of hashtags to turn items into H2, H3, H4, and so on. In other words, it saves me a lot of time when I'm formatting and getting my content ready for the web. Now, of course, if you wanna preview what your output looks like with the archive, you're out of luck. You're actually just gonna to have to copy the content and move it over to Google Docs. And that's why I recommend pairing the archive with another app called Marked. You can get Marked on the App Store for $14. And basically marked works works quite nicely with the archive. So if I press shift command E and open up the archive, I can see a nicely formatted version of this article. Now clearly it has some formatting errors because I made some edits there in real time. So let me open up something else. I'm gonna press command shift E. And now I can copy this text into Google Docs and give it to a virtual assistant to publish. Or I can click the button here and export it as HTML, PDF, rich text, docx, and so on. Or if you don't want to use a third party app, you can just open it up in Finder, copy it, and then just edit it the old fashioned way. And of course you don't have to use Markdown. Like I said, the archive is great for note taking and writing. 
I also like the archive because it helps me categorize and organize all of my notes. So as I showed you earlier on, I have thousands of different notes inside of my Zettel Kasten or local folder on my Mac. And I sync all of these with iCloud on Dropbox. That's right, the archive doesn't actually sync your notes for you. You will need to do that with a third party service. To categorize these notes, I use hashtags. So for my daily newsletter, I'll use the hashtag email and I'll also use the hashtag doing so I can categorize notes that are for my newsletter, which are currently in progress. And then when I want, or when it's time to write, I will simply open up the archive. I'll press Command L, I'll type in email, and I'll type in doing, then I'll press the down arrow key. And now I can start to navigate through all of the different emails that I'm potentially going to write for my daily newsletter. So as you can see, some of these are in various states of progress. This one here is quite short. This one here is a little bit longer. This one here is just a subject line. This one here just has an example of new positioning I could try. This one talks about ChatGPT and basically the list goes on. So this one is pretty much nearly finished. And when I finished one of these emails for my daily newsletter, I'll just simply remove the hashtag doing. So I'm just gonna make sure that's removed from the bottom as well. And you can see then that it should disappear uh, from the left-hand sidebar the next time I update it or run the search. You can also do save searches. So just simply click right and then click edit save searches. And then you can just search for email and doing, and you can change the icon to something customizable. So I've actually set up a few custom searches. So these are all emails from my newsletter. This custom search is just LinkedIn and doing, and this is everything I'm gonna post on LinkedIn over the next few days, all in various states of progress. And this one here is uh, outlines uh, for my YouTube channel. And again, I can scroll up and down through these by pressing the arrow key. So. Let me scroll up to a video outline that I was working uh, this morning. So you can see here I use bullet point outlines for my YouTube videos. And I also like the archive because by pressing control, command and the arrow key, I can move these bullets up and down. So it has replaced an, an outliner tool that I used to use previously, which I did profile on the channel. And actually, if you want an insight into how I outline my articles and videos, I do have another video as well, which I'd recommend you check out. You can, of course, customize these searches to suit your workflow. So I have one for templates. And I also have one just for general notes. Now do remember if, you, if you're using the archive on more than one computer, you will need to reset up these save searches on your different devices because the archive does not sync your preferences from one device to the next. The archive does support images if you set it up correctly. So basically you can just take an image and drag it in to the archive and then you'll see it turns it into a folder URL that looks like this. So if I press Command Shift E, I can actually open up this particular note in marked and I can see the image. Uh, but for context, if I go to Finder and if I scroll up from my thousands of different notes, you can see I have a folder called Media where the archive automatically stores all of my images. And of course, all of this is customizable inside of Settings. So I can simply go to Storage to change my archive directory. And if I change my resources directory, it will change where it stores my media. And I can also change what drag and drop does as well. Now I do find that the archive isn't quite as good at images as some other apps that you may be used to like Google Docs and so on. But if you're just focused on writing and note taking, it gets the job done and it doesn't get in your way, which is basically what you want from an app like this. As you probably guessed by now, capturing notes regularly is a big part of my writing process. And because I have so many different notes, I need to have descriptive headings so I can quickly understand what they're about. And again, the archive makes this pretty easy. So I'm navigating through my notes. You can see some of them are subject lines, some of them are kind of prescriptions. Some of them are summaries of the note in question. Some of the headlines aren't that fleshed out. Some of them uh, are just basically a single idea that I need to write about. But I try and keep my note titles descriptive so I can understand exactly what the note in question is about or should be about. And at any time, I can quickly rename any one of these notes while I'm navigating through my library. And I like to spend maybe half an hour a week going through all of the notes that I've captured and maybe expanding them or fleshing them out. Now it is possible to interlink your notes with the archive as well. So to do it, just simply navigate to the note in question, right click, and then you can either copy the title and you can paste it in to the note, or you can select copy link, and then you can paste in the note link uh, at the bottom. So this can be quite useful if you want to build up a master note that lists out all of the other relevant notes on the topic. And I can of course click on the link to access it, or I can click on the hashtag to access all of the notes that have the same hashtag. Now, to be honest, I don't tend to add interlinked notes as much. Like I said, I find it faster and easier just simply to use hashtags to categorize and organize my notes. 
And I tend to do this by theme or by use case. And that's why you'll see many of these have YouTube or doing, uh, or if I scroll a bit further down, um, I've been taking a meditation course recently and you can see I've started to use the hashtag Cohen for Cohen's that I've gathered from this meditation course. And I can quickly reference them by typing in Cohen. I also have uh, other hashtags for rules, for games and so on. The archive actually makes it pretty easy to categorize your notes with hashtags as well. So it'll do an autocomplete. So if I type in hashtag and then D, it'll start to call out all of the notes that begin with, or the hashtags that begin with D. And then I can just use the arrow key to move up and down. In this case, I'm just going to select doing and I can quickly add it to this note in question. I've been using the archive for a few years and I like it because it's updated regularly. It's affordable and it's easy to use, but it's also surprisingly customizable. It's great if you want to build a note taking system and if you like to write every day. And it's also useful if you want to build up a library of notes for your content and for your ideas. Now, it's not going to do everything that a powerful writing app can do. You're probably not going to use this if you need a lot of fancy tools for manipulating images and also for project management. But if you just want something that helps you capture notes and helps you write, then the archive is worth checking out. And it's particularly good if you enjoy writing with Markdown. That's an overview of how I'm using it. And like I said, it's pretty much the writing app I use most these days for my Zettel Keston. And of course, if you want to learn more about the Zettel Keston, do check out my entire playlist. And I actually have a course that'll help you set up your Zettel Keston. If you're interested, let me know and I'll put a link to that in the comments section below this video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ask me questions.